I just took Kehi's Notion course, Supercharge Your Productivity. In just four weeks, my Notion dashboard went from looking like this to looking like this. That's great, but Kehi's course offers a much more powerful transformation than just a Notion dashboard. The kind of transformation that you can't stuff into a Notion database. In this video, I'll be discussing my experience with SYP, what I liked about the course, what I didn't like about the course, and who I think should take Supercharge Your Productivity. Hi, I'm James, an engineer from Seattle, Washington. On this channel, I help lifelong learners just like you become more productive without turning into a robot. Kehi's Notion class is a bit of a bait and switch. With a title like Supercharger Productivity, you might expect a super hyper focus on optimization, on Notion databases, on task management. And while you do get that, from the very first class, Kay has you thinking a little harder about productivity. In his words, come for the productivity, stay for the existential. More on that later. First, let's talk about how this course is structured. I was in cohort six of Supercharger Productivity and the course was four weeks. Every week there were two live lectures. The first lecture was more about theory and existential ideas and the second lecture of the week was about executing those ideas in Notion. Besides the two lectures every week, there were optional office hours, there were optional mentor workshops where previous students would come in and show off different aspects of their Notion setups, pre-recorded videos on how to do basic tasks in Notion, or even some more advanced tasks. There were plenty of templates if you just wanted to copy and paste certain things, and there was also a Slack community. For an online cohort like this, it felt like just the right amount of content not too much that it felt overwhelming, but definitely enough that you feel like you got your money's worth. I want to address the elephant in the room. Why on earth is a self-proclaimed productivity nerd like myself taking yet another Notion course? I already have a system that works. I feel like I have a pretty good grasp on Notion and how to use databases. So why would I take a course like this? For many, many years, I was always looking for the optimal way to do things. And over the years, I've learned a lot about productivity and about different systems and setups. But what I've ultimately come to realize is that seeking productivity for productivity's sake is like running really fast in a random direction. You might be going somewhere fast, but if you didn't pick the direction you're going in, you ultimately aren't any better off. There's been a shift in the way I'm thinking about productivity, and I saw that Kay was a little bit further than me on this shift. When I heard that his course would dive into more of these existential questions, I wanted to hop in and see how Kay was teaching this material. Let's talk about what I learned from the course. I'll talk about three big conceptual ideas from SYP and then a little bit about the Notion stuff. One of the first concepts that Kay talks about is this 10K flywheel. Many of us, when we think about productivity, when we look at making things more efficient, we think about the tools, we think about the systems. But getting trapped in this idea of tools doesn't help us. And in many ways, tools are just a form of self-soothing. So in the typical land of productivity, it's always about the tools. Tools, 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 and in tools, I also mention systems like GTD. Tools, systems, tools, systems. We jump from tool to tool, from Notion to Evernote to Rome to Obsidian, because we're afraid of the other two parts of this flywheel, behavior change and self-awareness. But without these other two parts of the flywheel, we can't make progress. See, so this is why we split the course. On Tuesdays, we talk about the red and the blue, and on Thursdays, we talk about the yellow, but they work closely together. So the next time you're examining a new tool or a new system, remember this flywheel and figure out if you're avoiding these other two. The second big concept I learned from SYP is Kay's 10K framework. It's a way of thinking about the potential value of the work you're doing. This is the $10,000 an hour framework. On one axis, you have leverage high leverage and low leverage. And on the other axis, on the, on the uh, X axis, you have skill, low skill and high skill. There's $10 work, which is low skill, low leverage work that basically anyone could do. $100 work where you're thinking about systems and improving processes. $1,000 work, that's any kind of specialized work that takes a long time to learn how to do, but you can charge good money for it. And $10,000 work, which is this far-flung speculative work that might create leverage for you in the future. A particular trap that productivity enthusiasts fall into is sticking with the $100 quadrant, spending a lot of time working on systems and processes and 
improving efficiency while avoiding riskier but potentially higher payoff tasks. I like to think of a dividing line between like the 10 and the 100 and the 1,000 and the 10K. It's the difference between efficiency and effectiveness, execution and learning, hungover work and deep work, dopamine releasing work, hard to define work, short-term thinking, and playing the long game. If you take a look at your workday and realize that you're doing a lot of 10 and $100 work, maybe reconsider and figure out how you can do a little bit more $1,000 or $10,000 work. The final concept from SYP that I want to bring up is this concept of telic and atelic work. There were telic activities, which were activities directed towards an end. So that hesitation of the outcome orientation. And they were, there were atelic activities, activities done for their own sake. In modern society, most of us get caught up in telic work. That is any kind of work that's done as a means to an end. There's nothing wrong inherently with telic work, but we can get caught up making everything telic. Many of us here, if you're taking this course, are telic transformers. I'm so guilty of this. And it's our, our brain's way of taking anything that should be pursued in that moment, any atelic activity, and turning it into a telic one. We can sleep so we can work better. We can take vacations so that we can rest up and perform better at work. We can meditate so we can focus better at work. Where does beauty or wonder or fun come into the equation here? If everything we do in life is telic with a means to an end, when does it stop? Do we just continue working and being more efficient and systematizing things and getting more money? Until when? What happens? And so this puts us in quite a precarious position, right? Because when you're in the pursuit of a goal, of an outcome, the minute you extinguish that goal, you extinguish the happiness that came with pursuing that goal. So then you move the goal line. Breaking down these behaviors and incorporating more atelic actions, actions that are done for the enjoyment of the action itself, is an important part of living a full life. So Kay takes these powerful existential concepts and brings them back to the tool, Notion. On Thursday's lectures, we would build up our Notion HQ. To get our feet wet with Notion, we learned how to build a habit tracker, a simple task manager, and a jar of awesome. I really like Kay's idea of a jar of awesome. It's a collection point for anytime someone gives you a compliment, or someone says something nice to you, or maybe you just had a great day. Next, we learned how to build a task manager that takes into account this 10K framework. Then Kay taught us how to use Notion databases in a really powerful way. Using Notion databases to keep track of tasks, of notes, of projects, of areas, allows us to look at the data that we need right now with different filters, different views, different ways of slicing and dicing the database. Instead of getting overwhelmed by a task manager, we can look at the important things, the 10K work, the relevant projects, the areas that we've been neglecting. And finally, in the last week, Kay shows us how to put it all together to make it into a working system that can evolve and grow with you over time. Even though I was already really confident with Notion, seeing the way that Kay puts together databases and handles the views was inspiring. Let's talk about what I liked about this course. From the get-go, one thing I really liked was that Kay outlined different time commitments you could put into the course. If you barely had any time at all, the recommendation was to show up to the live lectures. But if you were someone who had tons of time to dive in and dig in, the recommendation was to show up to all the office hours, show up to all the mentor workshops. It was nice of Kay to sort of lay out different time commitment levels. The second thing I really liked about the course was the amazing community. I'm not a huge fan of Slack channels, but the people in this particular community are friendly, helpful, and are definitely willing to go out of their way to help you out. When people had questions about Notion, others would chime in with Loom videos showing them how to do things that they had questions about. Kay's Rad Reads ethos really resonates with his students, and they also project this Rad Reads ethos of being friendly and helping and giving. The third thing I liked about this course is that Kay's a really good teacher. He's been teaching this kind of material for six years now, and he's able to explain these difficult concepts in simple ways that are easily understandable. This wouldn't be a proper review if I didn't mention the things I didn't like about the course. For one, the notion portion of the course felt kind of crammed in. My understanding is that earlier cohorts only talked about notion and that this cohort brought in these more existential questions. Probably because this is the first time that both are being taught at the same time, 
The notion portion felt kind of rushed. Towards the end, it felt like we were kind of speed running through some complicated things like formulas that might have left some students feeling behind. There are pre-recorded videos available talking about these different formulas and things, but it would have been nice to have more time in class to talk about these topics. Another issue that arose because of this new curriculum was that some of these syllabus felt a bit ad hoc. It's all very important and interesting material, but it would have been nice to have a more clear syllabus. Finally, there were some technical errors that kind of messed up or delayed a live session or two. These are things that you don't want happening during an expensive live course. I know that Kay is working really hard to resolve these issues, and I don't expect them to occur in future cohorts. I'm really kind of nitpicking here. Let's talk about who should and who should not take the course. You should not take this course if the cost is a significant financial burden to you. This is not a cheap course, and technically the material in it can all be learned by looking at Kay's YouTube channel or his blog. There's no material in here that he hasn't necessarily talked about or written about for free online. As always with these cohort-based courses, you're paying for accountability, for access to a community, for course organization, facilitation, and access to the teacher. While a very motivated student could learn all this stuff for free, I think that the power of a cohort-based course cannot be underestimated. Second, you should not take this course if all you want to learn is about Notion. If you're not into the existential examine life kind of concepts, you're probably not going to enjoy half of this course. So who should take this course? If you're someone who chases productivity tool after productivity tool, system after system, looking for the best way to do things. If you're someone who does everything in service of working harder or working smarter, and doesn't take the time to do activities for their own sake. If you're someone who frees up time with productivity systems only to fill it with more productivity, this might be the course for you. Second, if you're someone who uses Notion on a daily basis, but wants to understand databases and how to use them in a more structured, powerful approach, you'll also find a lot of value out of this course. I really enjoyed Supercharger Productivity. It's a great balance of existential and actionable. Kay is a great teacher, and the community he's built is full of wonderful, ambitious, amazing people. If you get a chance, I highly recommend taking his course. There's a link below in the description. If you enjoyed this video, here's an interview with the creator of Supercharger Productivity, Kay He. If you're interested in more reviews of cohort-based courses, check out this playlist. See you next time.